Who is better for the U.S. economy, Republicans or Democrats? The left or the right, blue or red? Many people have strong opinions about which political party is better for the U.S. economy. In the next several minutes, we're going to answer this question by examining factual data from the past 40 years, analyzing the economic performance of presidents from both parties through seven different economic factors. Economic factors. For each president, we will evaluate the following seven economic factors. We will examine the data from the oldest to the most recent presidents, starting with Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. Under President Jimmy Carter, we had an average GDP growth rate of 2.8% per year. The national debt increased by 42.7%, which breaks down to 99.57% per year on average. Coming off the back of the 70s, we had a high inflation rate of 9.9% under Carter. The stock market had average returns of 6.9% per year, although if you look at a chart it is basically flat, illustrating the difference between average annual return and compounded annual growth rate. Real estate average returns were 1.4% under Carter. Median household income growth was 1.32%, and real median household net worth growth was 9.67%. Ronald Reagan Many boomers consider Reagan the best president, especially those who are conservative. Reagan saw a GDP growth of 3.6%, but the national debt increased by a staggering 186%. This averages to a 13.7% increase per year. Inflation fell to 4.6%, and the stock market had great returns averaging 10.2% per year. Real estate returns were 1.4%, median household income growth was 0.61%, and household net worth growth was 8%. George H.W. Bush GDP growth under Bush Sr. was 1.8% per year, with national debt growth of 54% total, breaking down to 11% per year. Inflation was 4.3%, and stock market returns were 11% per year. Real estate average return was minus 2.5%, and median household income growth was minus 0.75%. Median household net worth grew 4.79% per year. Bill Clinton Clinton had a GDP growth rate of 4% and only increased the national debt by 32% over his two terms. Inflation was 2.6% and the stock market averaged 15% per year. Real estate returns were 2.25%, median household income growth was 1.29%, and household net worth grew by 5.56% per year. George W. Bush GDP grew by 2.4% under Bush Jr., and the national debt increased by 105%, averaging 8.84% per year. Inflation was 2.8%, and the stock market returned minus 2.3% per year due to the financial crisis. Real estate returns were 1.22%, median household income declined by 0.26%, and household net worth grew by 5.3% per year. Barack Obama Under Obama, GDP grew by 2.3% per year, and the national debt increased by 70%, averaging 8.28% per year. Inflation was 1.4%, and the stock market averaged 12.8% per year. Real estate returns were 1.17%, median household income grew by 0.97%, and household net worth grew by 5.3% per year. Donald Trump GDP growth under Trump was 2.3%, and the national debt increased by 40%, averaging 8.06% per year. Inflation was 1.9%, and the stock market averaged 13.6% per year. Real estate returns were 5.5%, median household income growth was 1.55%, and household net worth grew by 8.83% per year. Joe Biden GDP growth under Biden has been 2.2% per year, with a national debt growth of 21.8%, averaging 7.41% per year. Inflation has been 5.7%, and the stock market has averaged 11.1% per year. Real estate returns have been 4.42%, 
Median household income growth has been minus 1.36% and household net worth has declined by 1.5%. Summary After evaluating the data, it becomes clear that both parties have their strengths and weaknesses regarding economic performance. While there are slight differences, the overall impact on the economy by either party is relatively similar. Rather than hoping for a political savior, it is more prudent to focus on what you can control to improve your financial situation. Conclusion Neither Republicans nor Democrats are definitively better for the U.S. economy. Both parties have had periods of economic success and challenges. Instead of relying on political changes, focus on taking actionable steps to protect and grow your wealth. If you'd like to stay informed about the news that actually matters and get ideas to protect and grow your wealth, consider subscribing to our channel, All Things Money. It's completely free, and you can sign up using the subscribe link below. Stay tuned for more insights and strategies to help you navigate the complex world of economics and personal finance. As always, do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel, All Things Money, to see more content like this.